Hi guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a leaf cane. Now, today we are going to be working with Kato. This will work with any of the other brands like Primo or Fima Professional but I thought I'd show you what it's like to work with Kato for once as I've shown Fima Professional and Primo in the past. Anyway, what I've got over here is a Skinner Blend Bullseye Cane done with White Kato and Green Kato. Now I've sh I have a video on Skinner Blend Bullseye Canes if you want to go check that out I include it in the links below and I also have a link down there to how to do a Skinner Blend if you don't know how to do that yet either. But basically what you want is just a round Skinner Blend Bullseye Cane like that and then you also want a strip of black and this was done on my middle setting which is a number four my pasta machine so it's about that thick now we want it a little bit thinner so I'm going, going to take it down from my number four to my number two okay there we are and we'll use that in just a second now what you want to do there are many different ways of doing a leaf cane. This is how I personally prefer to do it, but there are different ways of creating a leaf cane. So be sure to go check around. There are lots of other ones. I'll probably be doing some more tutorials in the future on how to do a leaf cane, as there are many different leaves to play around with and many different techniques to create those leaves. So you just want to form it into a rough rectangle shape and form somewhat of a corner, three corners. You don't want to square off these corners though, you just want them round, like that. Okay, and then you'll go from the top of your corner and you'll cut straight down. It's important to try and cut straight down. Like that. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that one to the side for the moment and we'll work on this one. And now this is going to be the middle of our leaf so we're going to put some black over here to form a vein. But leaves also have veins down the sides so we're going to cut down the side over here and try to keep it as straight as possible. And so we'll do those veins first. All we do, I'm going to put that to the side, I'm going to bring over the black. Just make sure that you're getting it on the right side. I've done it on this side by accident sometimes. You'll just lay that on the black and you get your exact knife or just a craft knife and you trim away the excess black. Just like that. I'll lift the black away put that to the side and then just make sure that it's nicely stuck onto the black so that when you lift it off it's not going to fall off and then you will pop that back onto the cane so that now you have formed a vein and then I'm going to do another two I'll have one there and I'll also have one here so I'll go fill those in and then we can go back and I'll show you how to put the vein in over here. Okay, so I've just got one more to go. Just thought I'd show you this again, as I only showed you once. Just pop it onto the black, trim away the excess. Like that. to the side and just lift up with your blade and pop it on where it needs to go just like that so this side versus this side so now what we need to do is we need to have a vein down this way so we'll bring over the black again and we'll pop it face down onto the black make sure it's stuck nicely We'll trim away the excess. 
that we cut out a shape. And this is a very simple beef cane. You can add many, many different elements to it to make it work much more interesting. You could add borders. You This bit that I'm doing now, you could do with a cane instead of just a plain sheet of black. And I'll definitely be showing leaves like that in the future, so be sure to look out for that. But this is just a basic leaf, so be sure to experiment around and see what you can do. So that's the half that we've got and this is the half that needs to be done so this vein we don't want to do on this one again we just want to put in these three bits on this side so I'll come back when I've done that and I'll show you how to reduce it okay so here's the one that we did before and here's the one that I've done now So I'm just gonna line it up squish it together So that it doesn't come apart. Okay, so that's what we have now. Now, what we need, now this is optional, of course, you can have a border. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my leftover black that I had that we cut off from this, and I'm going to use that to wrap around the cane. Now, this is optional, you don't have to have anything around the cane. But I find that it looks interesting. Plus, you don't have to just use a solid color. You could use, oh, you could use one of those checkerboard patterns where you have the black, white, black, white. You could use a Skinner blend to wrap around. You could do all sorts of things. So I'll just take this black and run it through my pasta machine on my second thinnest setting, and that's what I've got. And then I'll just pop this down so that I can see how thick I need to make the strip. Like that. Okay, and then you'll just take it, oops, excuse my hand, and you'll wrap it around your cane. Just like that. Okay, and we don't want overlaps, so just squish it up against it and then lightly tap on the connecting surface. So just tap where the two connect, then peel it back and you should get something that looks like that, which tells you exactly where you need to cut it so that it lines up perfectly. Okay, and there we are, that lines up perfectly exactly what you want is overlaps aren't so good okay now what you need to do is you need to reduce this as a triangle so you start from the top pinch and pull flip go to the next corner pinch and pull now because this is Kato and it is a little, quite a bit firmer than Primo it takes a little while to reduce which is fine because you want to reduce slowly anyway because you need to make sure that your ends don't bulge out and things like that. So it's fine that it reduces slower and also it's really cold here at the moment so this is the hardest Kato is going to be. But it's really nice clay to work with when it comes to canes. It gives you a really sharp crisp image at the end. So you can see I'm just pinching and pulling slightly, you don't want to pull so much that you rip the cane but you want to pull slightly because polymer clay is flexible and it will allow to be stretched it will allow itself to be stretched just you need to know how far you can go without breaking it and you'll just carry on doing this until you've got the cane reduced as far as you need it to be okay so here it is reduced and I could go a bit further but I decided I'd show you what it looks like round about now. So I'm going to take my flexible tissue blade as this one will give a... Actually, you know, I'm going to take my Lucy Clay blades. There we are. These ones are really sharp. I use them specially for cutting canes. So I'll use these ones as they're quite sharp. Now just cut off the ends. Okay, so 
here's what it looks like at the moment. Now this is a very exaggerated triangular shape and I like to keep my canes in this shape because it's really easy to reduce them like this but when you use them as a slice you this doesn't really look like a leaf if you keep it in this shape so I'll just show you what I like to do when they're in this shape So I'll just take off a slice like that what I like to do is I like to blunt up the ends a bit and you can do this to the cane before you slice it as well I do that sometimes and I like to round off the edges as well just like that you can manipulate it there so I usually use them in that shape more often and you can use it in different shapes but if I cut another piece I'll show you what it actually looks like once it's off the cane so that shape versus sh that that shape you could this one's obviously more leaf like than this one and you could work at it a bit more that was a quick me doing it quite quickly but you could maybe do some indents on the veins so that they look interesting you can take your knife the blunt end and just go around the veins and press into them to give it a weird indented textured look like this I find that that can look interesting sometimes and down the vein as well like that you could also do some texture around the edges you could play around with it and see what you could do but you know that's what I like to do I like to just keep it in this shape and then store it and then whenever I want to use it I will take it and then mold it into the shape that I like so that's basically how to create a leaf cane I'm going to go and bring over some examples of things I've done using leaf canes and some other canes that some other leaf canes that are just done using some extra bits and bobs so I'll just bring those over for you to see okay so here's one that I did and this one has the veins in it but the I didn't use a Skinner blend bullseye cane for this one this one I actually used um, a grater and grated a whole bunch of specific colors to get this autumn leaf look then I took that leaf and I turned it into this cane which I'm not sure about I was trying to go for an oak leaf but I'm not sure if I got it right but I turned it into this then I've got a more realistic looking leaf just this one where I, which is a lot more complicated than the one that we did today where I had to construct it and all sorts of things and it actually was a much bigger cane than we did today and then the exact opposite of that one over here was done with these canes so these are the exact opposite of realistic here we go. so these all came out of the same cane and I'll be showing a rainbow leaf cane in the future but these ones came out of the same cane and you can see that they don't look like real leaves at all but they're interesting and this is what I was saying where you can just take the exact same concepts that I showed today and turn them into some really interesting looking canes and then I've got a few beads where I've used the canes so here's one and this one on this side you can see the leaves that I just showed you a second ago in the raw form this isn't my best bead it was more of a test to see what I could do but that was done using some leaf canes and then this one's also got a leaf cane in it over here which is a translucent leaf cane here's another one done with some translucent leaf canes 
And then one of my best ones, I think, as far as using leaves in beads go, was this bead. And it's part of a much larger necklace, but you can see that I have more of an oak leaf kind of look. I was going for more autumn look. So I'll just bring this over and show you what the entire necklace looks like. So you can see that I've done leaves all the way around. But they were done using almost the exact same concept that we did today, just using some different methods of um, using the leaves and using different Skinner blends and maybe using some grated colours and all sorts of things. So you can do whatever you want with the leaf cane. Be sure to experiment around with it as it's a really versatile technique that can be used in many, many different ways. And so I hope that this video was helpful to you. And if it was, please do check the links below as there will be links to more tutorials like this one. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.